Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Well, now that Rebecca has walked in and I have my cup of old English tea, oh, the show may her. commence. And we're going to start with a four shot, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for being here and thank you for supporting the show. Um, we've got lots to talk about. We've got fights at the weekend. We've got UFC 299. Here we go again, happening at the weekend. Um, but also at the weekend, we had the return of the Jake Paul. The problem child, okay? The the biggest fake and con man in all of boxing, okay? The biggest con man ever. This morning, I'm sitting there. I'm scrolling Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. And I see a, I see a tweet from Brian saying, oh, I hate to agree with Harrington here, but it's I true. do. So, so I look at what Harrington's tweet was, and I see it, and I said, that was bullshit, Ver- not verbatim. That was bullshit. We'll discuss on the show. First of all, Harrington, the floor is yours. Well, all right. I'm just going to, in that case, then I will 100% stand by this and read it out verbatim. Uh, I said, it is insane how much people move the goalpost on on Jake Paul. First, it was fight an athlete, not an influencer. So he plants Nate Robinson. Then it's fight a fire, not an NBA player. So he knocks out Askren. Then Woodley, then Woodley again, and people say, okay, but fight someone your size. So he takes on Anderson Silva and largely outclassed him, but that's not good enough. Now he's got to fight a real boxer. Sorry, folks, but a lot of real boxers deliver pizzas, work in steel mills or other factories. So he took out two of those guys. Now it's got to be fight someone your own age and skill level who has a world championship aspirations and the skills to back it up. Garbage. Canelo Alvarez's opponent's combined record in their first 10 fights was 9-17-1. He didn't fight another true contender till he was 19 fights into his career. In fact, his 10th win came against the guy making his pro debut. Jake's 10th yeah. fight was against a boxer with 17 wins. But he's a joke. because You he are not reading to... the entire tweet here. That you, I, you're, I you're elaborating on the tweet to further bolster your point. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm not, are you I'm telling me? Are, wait, wait. Are you telling me? First of all, I didn't even know Jake Paul was fucking fighting until it was over. <laughs> okay. That's not even. A, I'm not even joking. Until it was over, I had no idea he was fighting. Two. Are you talking about the guy that drives Uber that hasn't fought in four years? That's the one that just made you want to send a tweet. Yeah. That so guy? so 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 so. Listen. Whilst in essence. You do have a point, Hamilton, because, yeah, okay, we were talking No, 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 f- that. There's no, no but point. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No here, here, here's my point. I'm here's chomping at the point. bit here. <laughs> chomp away. <laughs> chomp it, chomp it, go. Well, like, you can't compare his first 10 fights to Canelo Alvarez's because Canelo wasn't fighting those 10 fights, talking about he was the best fighter in the world, calling out every single Hall of Famer and, and legend in a completely separate sport. He wasn't fighting 10 fights talking about how good he, how good he was at tennis. Like he, he was fighting those fights very quietly, but also not saying that he was the best guy in the world and he would knock out all these world champions after he was already rich. He didn't pick off a bunch of legends from other sports to prop up his own, you know, his, his own viewership and all the other bullshit to bring eyes to it from a completely different sport because he's not good enough at the one that he actually fights in. He used Correct a whole bunch Mundo. of other people. Correct, Amanda, but here was my point as well. Because, yeah, as you say, boxers, when they start their career, like a lot of boxers, they fight uh, maybe not the best competition. They have fights that they are maybe expected to win. If they've got a good manager that's yeah, kind they're, of the they're pad, padded. They nag it. Yeah, yeah, they pad their records. They get experience. They take on journeymen, so on and so forth, and all the rest of it. What they don't do, though, and, and granted, Jay Paul's doing that now. Jay Paul's fighting a couple of these has-beens, a couple of Uber drivers, a couple of guys that aren't his size, that aren't athletic, that took four years off the sport recently because they're not uh, committed to the sport of boxing, right? Which is what Ryan Borland did. But also, when they do that, they're buried way deep on the prelims. They're not charging $50 on goddamn pay-per-view to watch the shit show. They, the only time you have the audacity to charge someone $50 for pay-per-view is when people are going to see a real fight, okay? To get people to part ways with their hard-earned money in this current economy, right? And then to offer them 
that, that absolute shit show. The, listen, fair play to Ryan Borland. Apparently he made $2 million. I'm very happy for him. And Good I've got for respect him. for anyone that steps foot in the octagon. But for Jake Paul to present that as a legitimate test and then to try and charge people $50 for that, in the words of Nate, Nick Diaz, is wolf t- tickets. In the words of Habib Namagomedov, this is number one bullshit, brother. And in the word of Michael Bisping, he's the biggest con man in all of goddamn boxing. So Harrington... Let's take a vote on this, Anthony. I've changed my mind already. You guys, you guys have convinced me that he was a hundred percent wrong. Anthony. It's bullshit. <laughs> does he does he have to delete the tweet? I I, I think he should delete the tweet. <laughs> I think he should delete the tweet. But then, where would all the people who want to call me nut huggers go and respond to it? No, just whatever your last tweet was. <laughs> just we give me all the hate on that one. We may be creating an unsafe work environment here by forcing <laughs> employees of the show what to, do, a day already. to live their life. But I feel like, Harrington, you got to delete that tweet. It doesn't fall in line with our Believe You Me code of conduct standards. I'm sorry. You know, when, when, he, and when he was talking about, you know, when he, you need to fight someone that's your own weight, your own size, your own skill level, I wanted to cut him off and say, oh, you mean like UFC fighters do every Saturday? Yes. For fraction of the money buried on undercards like i don't know I, I don't even mean to jump right into the fights but it reminded me of uh who was the, the kid that took the flying knee from Oliveira? what was his last name what was his name so pie so pie bernardo so pie and i did want to talk about this actually go ahead so uh, as he's talking i thought about so pie 23 years old just laid his heart out there we and, and and again this is a, a whole nother issue that has nothing everything was done right the referee did a good job what everything was fine that guy took some serious time off of his life and his career just trying to make it meanwhile jake paul is fishing and searching and scavenging every couch cushion for a former addict a guy that needs a paycheck that used to be able to do it to get in there and beat the out of him in front of the whole world to tell everyone how great he is and then and then on the flip side you got Oliver and sopai in there out there fighting for their lives tooth and that's why boxing sucks but that's but, why boxing but, but, sucks. listen for a lot of people listening to this they would say well jake paul's smart and listen fair play right in the capitalist society well done to him he's making money right but but put the label of businessman on him because he ain't the label of fighter doesn't apply. And I'm glad you brought up that guy, Bernardo Sopai, made his UFC debut at the weekend. I think it was on four days' notice, went up against Vinicius Oliveira. This was on the prelims. And it was one of the nastiest knockouts that we've seen in recent history. Bernardo Sopai, I did my research on him. I was so impressed. You want to see what he is capable of, some of the power, the skill that he has, the knockout ability, beautiful strike and all the rest Grappling of it. Grappling was amazing. Great grappling, the full product, and 23 years old. And he went up against Oliveira, who had a crazy knockout on the Contender Series, tons of experience, way bigger than him. And he was winning the fight. He almost had the fight finished. But the bigger guy, the older guy, the more experienced guy, kind of turned the tide. Solpai got tired. And then in round three, I think it was, he ate one of the most disgusting flying knees yeah. that you've seen in recent memory. People were liking it to when Anderson Silva hit me. That was worse, man. And the sound of the impact, and he fell and he dropped and he was unconscious for quite some time. That's going to be hard because I, I reached out to his coach. I, I shot him a DM because I was yeah. not concerned because sadly this is the world that we live in. This is the game that we're choosing to play, you know. Uh, and I'm gl- glad to hear that he got fight of the night. So he yeah. got an, an extra fifty thousand dollars in his account, making your UFC debut and getting knocked out like that at such a young age could have some psychological trauma attached to it. Yeah, yeah, it, it could, and and I hope I hope that it doesn't because if, if he can come back and shake that off as a as a one off, short notice, big dude, I got tired and got put myself in a in a in a tricky spot. And he can just move on. That guy is going to be a serious problem for a lot of people. But and the the saddest part to me is, is everyone who's listening to this right now. I bet only fifty percent of you that watch fights even watched it. 
because it was mm. buried on the prelims. And that's where I brought it back to Jake Paul because he toted this goddamn poor guy for, out of Uber and charged everyone $50 for it. That Oliveira Sopai fight was worth way more than that. And nobody it was, knew. it was. But again, again, that, that is the sport of boxing and that is yeah. what they do. And again, well, I'm, I'm, all of that's I'm, fine with Jake until then, until he says the, the end of whatever the fuck he's saying, whether it's I'm the best boxer in the world, I'm a world champion, I'm a this, I'm a that, and shits on other people. That's where my problem always is. I've never had a problem with Jake Paul doing his thing. I've, I've never, I'm not a fan, but I'm, who am I to tell people they can't make money? That's fine. I'm happy that mm. the guy he fought over the weekend made a couple million dollars. That genuinely makes me happy. Yeah. He, well, he, well, clearly on he that made. note, on that note, because I'll bring up Conor McGregor, and not to shit talk, just to kind of explain why Jake annoys me and it's on the same kind of vein. I knew Connor when he first came over. He wanted a manager, so I introduced him to Audi at Paradigm Sports Management and stuff. And Audi's done an incredible job, and Audi was kind of in the discussion anyway. I'm not taking credit for any of that. Uh, what I'm saying is that's how our worlds kind of collided, you mm-hmm. know. And when you come to the UFC, you know, Conor McGregor wasn't always making Conor McGregor money. Right. But when he did start making Conor McGregor money, he started talking shit about people that were making less money. You know right. what I mean? And And – I, I just don't like seeing fighters, and I'm not necessarily. I'm talking about Jake Paul now, not Connor. When they get up here and they start making money, ridiculing people that are in a position where you once were. You're very mm-hmm. lucky. You're very fortunate. Jake Paul can go and knock this guy out and make tons of money. Fantastic. But don't ridicule other people. And it doesn't come from jealousy. It comes from decency. And it also comes a slight bit of frustration because then you're going to call out Canelo Alvarez, <laughs> whose weight class is lower than you. Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia is calling him out as well, who's 140 pounds. That's going to be perfect for Jake Paul, 140 pounds. Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia, let's go. Right up Garcia his probably beats him. <laughs> yeah, that's right up his lane, though. Right, All right. Up is Ali. Anyway, anyway, we'll start the show with it. Yeah, Harrington, um, just give the details here if you don't mind, because the main event, and we're not trying to rip on what is it called? Well, what's the promotion called? Most MVP promotions. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, Jake Paul's most valuable promotions. That's it. Yeah, we're not trying to rip on that, you know. Hey, listen, you. Fair play. I hope everyone's successful in all of their ventures, and I truly mean that. Wait, was the main event had to be. So, no, so there was the co-main event. Amanda Serrano was the main event. She was co-main event on his own show. He was well, yeah, because he knows he can't be main event on that. What are you rolling your eye at, Harrington? <laughs> yeah, he's fighting a Uber driver from Oklahoma that he dragged out of retirement. Of course, he's not going to make himself the main event on that. Hey, it's a little bit of, of humility and perspective. Oh my God, how much is he, how much is he paying you right now? Right, right. Oh my can God, we match, can we match it for you to, to shut the up and get back on our side <laughs> yeah. is, is, or is it way more is it way more than that <laughs> oh my god if i was getting paid it'll be, I more, it'll be more than we can afford to be fair <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> um no, no what happened in the main event harrington uh so amanda serrano uh she went and got a uh hair treatment done she got some some dye in her hair uh you know before the fight she went on a run uh pre-fight on friday and apparently some of it sweated into her eyes uh, and like started messing with her cornea. Uh, so doctor said doctors came out and said, you can't fight like there's no you, you are not going to be cleared to fight. She got into the ring uh, with Paul with like those giant sunglasses on to, to you know, help with light sensitivity. And she apologized to the crowd um, and they booed her lustily uh, saying that, you know, she wasn't going to be able to fight. It's very unfortunate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Jake and MVP promotions then came out and said, uh, we're giving a full refund to anyone who asked for it, uh, for the $1.5 million gate that they claim to have done on that card. Okay. Okay. Now go out and wash all Jake Paul's, uh, favorability out of your mouth, please Harrington, before you return. Um, well, that's number one, that that's such a shame for everyone that did buy a ticket. It's a shame for Amanda Serrano. Uh, but it just, Made me think that's an interesting conversation point. You know, have have you Mm -hmm. ever had anything like that in your career that last minute something happened and you had to pull out or almost caused you to pull out? Yeah. Have I not told the story here? Which which one? John Jones. I don't know. See, if I tell the story, it's going to sound like I'm making an excuse. (sighs) Anthony has excuses. You do it every time. Every time. You could have beaten um, well, it if it I, wasn't for that bit of... I don't know about that, but I couldn't get out of bed at all. 
the morning of the fight. They had the entire UFC PI staff in my suite at the Aria trying to get me unlocked. It's no secret. I've had neck problems for a long time. Um, not nearly Don't get me started not, on neck problems. I'm saying, dying right now. Don't not, you start. I know. Not nearly as bad as yours. But, you know. I'm uh, listening. I'm just texting for, me back. For what it's worth. Off. Yeah. For what it's worth, I got a. Uh, uh, I need a couple neck procedures done, and I've been holding them off for a long time. Because uh, I think that once I have them, I'll be done for sure. So, um, anyways, the neck was fine through the whole John Jones training camp. You know, I do the injections here and there. I hadn't had one in a long time, uh, but my neck was feeling good. I didn't have any problems. I thought, oh, this is perfect. I don't need it. I'm good to go. Morning of the fight, I don't know if it was the weight cut or whatever. Morning of the fight, I couldn't get out of bed. My neck was locked. My wife is panicking. She's calling my manager and calling the, the support staff at the PI. Um, and we had chiropractors and doctors and acupuncture people. And I mean, there was probably 20 people in my room trying to get me unlocked in the little living room area on a, on a table and <clears throat> give me uh, muscle relaxers and trying to get me to just un, un, which is exactly unwind. what you want morning of your world title fight against. Yeah. The, the biggest moment of your life is, is throw a few wake. muscle relaxers in him. Yeah. At 6 a.m. Let's just go ahead and just yeah. twist him in a pretzel and, and yeah. So yeah, but it, they got it loosened up. Um, I was able to take a nap and then uh, later on that afternoon, as soon as I got warmed up and got moving and we were able to do it, but we weren't, we weren't sure that I was going to be able to go. Well, you did. You just made a massive excuse, Anthony. You that's did. what it sounds that's like. Why. I mean, that's no, by but the time I thought I was okay. That's the only reason right? <laughs> why you didn't beat the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be it. No, it's I horrible, haven't. isn't it? You can't it's talk funny. about legitimate excuses. Like, like I have done it ad nauseum about when I fought George St. Pierre. My ribs were so bad. I had one of the best camps of my life. Uh, and then the week before, tore all the cartilage in my ribs. It was mm -hmm. terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the second And I had one eye. Up, yeah, but the second you bring it up, they're, you know, oh, he's making excuses. He's being a pussy. Like, it's, it's not making an excuse. That's, you, ask, you asked me the question. That's what happened the day before, or the day of my heart. Legitimate factor. Yeah. Um, so, Jorginho Rosenstroik got the job done. Just a quick recap of the fight. Mm -hmm. saying, well done to him. Got a win. Shamil Gazeev, uh, his first professional loss. Rosenstroik had way improved takedown defense. So, well done to him. Vito Petrino beat Tyson Pedro. Pedro wait, 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 go back. Tired. Before, you, before we go down, it, just quick. I don't, we don't have to get into it right now if you don't want to. But did that Rosenstreich fight go the way that you thought it was going to go? Or did you thought that it, did you think it was going to be a much closer fight than that? I thought he was going to struggle to keep the fight on the feet. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 I was surprised. Like pleasantly yeah. surprised. I'm happy for him, though. The better man won because, yeah. you know, Shamil still looked like he had some work to do. Anytime you see a Dagestani, and by the way, in his fights on the contender and the, the performance against Martin Budai, he looked good. He looked mm -hmm. legit. So it was a good win. For uh, Rolls and Strokes, so well done. And Rolls and Strokes, a cool guy, man. Yeah. And all of his family and entourage <laughs> and support. I said it on the broadcast. I was like, I want to hang out with them. They were making some noise, man. All the flags, they were chant, dancing, cheering. The whole time. The whole time. Biggie boy. Biggie, the whole time. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, Biggie Boy is easier to say than Jarzinho Rosenstrike on commentary. My it's hard God. to chant that. <laughs> it's a hard one to chant. Mohamed McIve continued the undefeated streak. Uh, I think he's now, what, 13 and all, something like that. Uh, congrats to him. Got it done over. Alex Perez. Umar Nurmagomedov continued the win streak. Almost got flatlined with the first exchange. Fair play, got dropped, got caught, immediately turned it into a single, got the double leg, and then pretty much dominated the rest of the fight. Umar, Umar Nurmagomedov, this is the chance to talk about this. Um, obviously, with the last name, the Nurmagomedov, with the skills that he has, the striking's phenomenal, the wrestling is phenomenal, the guy that he fought making his UFC debut, 17-1 and one from Kazakhstan, legitimate skills. I'm telling you, keep an eye out for that name. Um but Umar Nurmagomedov, what do you think his trajectory is? And ultimately, you think this man's bantamweight champion of the world at some point? Yeah, yeah. It was nice to see him have to struggle a little bit for just a little bit and have to adjust his game plan. I don't think he was probably planning on wrestling as much as he did. Um, Bekzat Alma, Al, Al, Al Alma Khan. Bekzat Alma Khan. Alma Khan. That dude is good. Really, really, really good. So. I, he's not going to get a, a shit ton of credit from the from the from the 
community and the fans. As analysts, me and Mike sat there and did the work and dug into that guy's career. That kid is good. He's really yep. he's as good as anybody else in that division. So I, I think it's a good win over a really, really tough, formidable opponent. Um, and I think he's on a on a collision course with uh, with Corey Sandhagen. I had interviewed Corey a couple weeks uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, that was a fight that Corey was supposed to have when he ended up fighting Rob Font, I believe, on short notice. Um, and so Corey was disappointed. It's a fight that he wants, and, and even though he is ranked much lower, um, I think that the UFC understands how tough of a fight that is, how skilled Umar Nurmagomedov is. And I think that's the number one contender fight. I think the winner of that gets a title shot. And I think a lot of yeah. those guys, any of them can beat the others. Well, that ties in perfectly. And well done to everybody that competed, uh, showed up, got a victory or didn't get a victory uh, on Saturday night. We're not going to go through the whole card. Lots to talk about. Sorry, the reason I'm looking over is I asked Rebecca to open the windows. Oh, it's the car wash, guys. I'm like, what is that noise? How oh. dare they getting- do the... They just come and wash your car. Well, we pay them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, most of us have to go to the car wash. Well, we do. Uh, most people do. But this is a great business that they have. It's cheaper than the car wash. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Because think about it. If you're, and I believe that you may be making a foray into the car wash business very soon. We won't get into it all. Yeah. Personal, private investment yeah. deals. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, 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 no. So I don't know. You got the car wash. Forty dollars or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you got to drive there. You got to wait, but but to uh, have your own car wash, you need a lot of money. These mm-hmm. guys, they got a little van, they got the power washers. They mm-hmm. come to our house. They go all over the neighborhood. They drive to us. They do each car thirty dollars a pop. And we don't. Oh, that's not bad. Anywhere. That's not bad at all. Yeah, that's not yeah. bad at all. That's a great deal. Right. We do have when we get like the the real like the details, like where they really spend a lot of time on it. Uh, we have them come to the house and do that, but yeah. I like going to the car wash. I go to the car wash every day. Stop trying to make me sound bad. All right, today's episode is sponsored by FitBod, which is the smart workout app that you need to have on your phone. Okay, listen, FitBod, this is an incredible app. If you can't afford for a personal trainer to take you through your paces every single day, to keep the workouts fresh, to keep you maximizing results, to keep you losing weight, staying motivated, and basically just not being bored in the gym, you need to get FitBod. If you can't get to a gym, it will give you a workout based on the equipment that you have available, whether that's your garage, you're down the local field, you're in the gym, or you're just at home or in the office. FitBod will create a personalized workout routine for you based on your goals, your fitness levels, and your available equipment. FitBod adapts as you improve, so each workout will still be challenging and push you to make progress. It traps your muscle recovery so you avoid burnout. It helps you keep up your momentum. It is fine-tuned by experienced, certified personal trainers to make sure that you get the best workout that you can possibly do. You can learn the new movements the right way with all the over 1,000 high-definition demonstration videos. So it will tell you the workout. It will show you the workout. You can watch the video, correct the form, and you get all of this for less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer. You get access to the app for a year. And right now, you can get 25% off your subscription, or you can try the app out for free when you go to fitbod.me slash believe. Add Fitbod to your workout essentials. Join Fitbod today to get your personalized workout plan. Struggling? Reach the plateau, just bored with your workouts, want to do something different, try it out for free. Go to fitbod.me slash believe. If you want to subscribe, get 25% off your subscription. Or as I say, try it out for free when you go to fitbod.me slash believe. Anyway, so back to Umar Namagamadov, right? If he beats Corey Sandhagen, if that indeed is the fight that happens, he's for sure going to get the winner of Cheeto Vera. Um, and uh, Sean O'Malley happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. Did you see that Aljamain Sterling came out and said that Cheeto Vera had a bad camp for this one, so therefore he's picking O'Malley to win? Did you see that? No, I didn't. Yeah, no, I sent a video. If we've got it, Brian, just play. I sent it to move, in the though. chat. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no need to play the video. That's what he said. He's sitting down doing a podcast. He's like, yeah, yeah I heard Cheeto had a bad camp, so I'm going to go with that. So I text Jason Perillo last night and we had a little conversation he's like no he had an amazing camp 
He said he's knocking people out in training. Bigger guys, longer guys. He's looking the best ever. He said, I don't understand why Al Jermaine Sterling would say that. And he's like, how could he have got that information? Where did he get that from? I don't want to say what his theory was. <laughs> I wonder what his theory is. You think maybe he's like trying to mess with O'Malley? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't think you should underestimate Cheeto Vera at all. Even Good Cheeto, camp on, even bad Cheeto camp. on a bad, bad camp is not a guy that you, you can underestimate. Sometimes... You, you know, having a bad camp and having a good camp doesn't necessarily result in the best fight. Like, as no. I said before, the George St. Pierre fight, I had the best camp ever. It was amazing. Yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish that version could have showed up in the fight. And I've had camps that were terrible. Mm -hmm. I've had camps where I've had, I've had fights where I've had no corner <laughs> and, and just everything's been terrible. But you go out and get a first round knockout. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. good, good camp, bad camp. And, and veterans camp. know that. Veterans know that. It doesn't, if you have a bad camp, as long as you're in shape, whatever, you'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah. I think in that fight, though, um, one big thing for, for Cheeto is that he's traditionally been a slow starter. I think with this being five rounds, that's not going to be as much of an issue. Um, O'Malley, of course, knocked out Aljamain Sterling, who mm -hmm. defended the belt, I think, more times than anybody at Bantamweight. So that's a yeah. tremendous victory. I do think, though, that the weight cuts to 135 for Aljamain Sterling is kind of what resulted in that knockout. Not taking away from O'Malley. He was incredible. That shot was perfect. The technical brilliance, the selection, the speed, the placement was fantastic. But I don't see him knocking out Cheeto like that. No. No, I don't. And we got to remember, when, when have we traditionally seen Cheeto struggle when he does? Against guys that have a legitimate wrestling threat. And yeah. O'Malley doesn't possess that for all the other skills that he has and the greatness that he has everywhere else. The one, and he's not a bad grappler. I'm not even saying he's a bad grappler. I had him on my jujitsu team. He, you know, <laughs> a, a nasty submission to Gomi. He he can grapple, mm. and he was scrapping with Hector Lombard for a pretty good amount of time for his size. He can grapple, but he's he 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 doesn't possess that real scary ability to put you on your back and. Uh, that's where Cheeto has had problems before. So I think that the wrestling threat sometimes causes Cheeto to back off a little bit. He's not going to have to do that. Uh, even with Dominic Cruz, he was just bigger and stronger, was able to really kind of thwart that a little bit. But, um, man, I, I don't think he's going to knock out Cheeto like that. He's too tough. And Cheeto's just mean. And he takes distance and takes ground, and he doesn't let you set your feet. And O'Malley's he does really well when he's got someone standing in front of him. And Cheeto has never been knocked out. Never been knocked out. Let me just look at his record here because I, I, I've commentated some of his fights and some of the shots that he's taken and he doesn't mark up. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? He takes, you know, like, because he is a slow starter. I'm trying to think maybe it was the Rob Font fight at the Apex. I commentated that. And Rob Font early was landing some shots mm -hmm. and I was like, holy shit. But she just is like a zombie, just takes the shots, walks them down and slowly but surely inserts himself into the fight and then completely took over, completely took over. And I think that's what we saw in the first fight with O'Malley and Cheeto. Because O'Malley, let's be honest, was looking good. Then there yeah. was the calf kick and he went down and then he got finished with a really nasty elbow. Um, when the so kicking game's a liability. Because uh, Sean O'Malley, again, I'm not trashing him. I think he's great. But... The Cheeto fight's not the only time we've seen him compromised at his wheels. It's, it's happened before when he did the interview with Rogan laying on his back with his leg all banged oh, up. Oh, that's right. Who like, did he fight there? At, at some points, he's had a liability on his on his bottom half. Not, not that I got any room to talk. But <laughs> Andre Sukumtath. Sukumtath. I think it was that fight there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did. That's right. He did the interview with Rogan sitting down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, when you talk about Sean O'Malley, he is a superstar, right? He's mm -hmm. got a big, big following. I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be an incredible fight card. We're going to get some quick predictions from you, Anthony, if you don't mind, because you're not going to be on Thursday's show. Mm -hmm. But O'Malley beats. Let's have a look. Alfred... Cash Kayan on the contender, Terry and Ware, Andre Sukumtats, Jose Quinones, Eddie Wineland. Two knockouts against Quinones. Eddie Wineland loses to Marlon Vera, mm -hmm. knocks out Thomas Almeida. TKO against Chris Matinho late in round three, knocks out Julian Piver in round one, 
No contest against Munoz. Has a tremendous victory against Peoria. Close fight. Close fight. But still, that proved his stock of where he was at, that he deserved this kind of, you know, attention. And then he knocks out Aljamain Sterling. Um, so it's been an incredible rise. It really has. What do you think about this fight and what is your prediction? Man, I'm, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning Cheeto. Um, and I think I think O'Malley has a better overall skill set than at least striking wise than Cheeto. He's definitely more technical. He's got he's more diverse. Um, he has a wider range, a wider array of, of uh, shot selections and his abilities there. I just I think that Cheeto at times is magical and he's very, very smart. And Perillo and them come up with great game plans. And he he he's not off very often. And we just he was he was just off versus Sandhagen. And I think that I don't know, I just don't think he's gonna have another off night. I think he's gonna look good. I think he's gonna attack the legs early. I don't think he's gonna overextend himself and be too aggressive. If you like go back to the Munoz fight. Like O'Malley was struggling a little bit and lost that first round because Munoz wasn't coming to him. He wasn't chasing him down. He 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 made O'Malley come to him. And that's a real thing, guys. It, some fighters do really good when they're being chased, and some fighters do really well when they're the one that's chasing. O'Malley's not the guy typically that fights moving forward very well. He doesn't do it often, um, and he's gotten better at it recently. But even in the Munoz fight. Munoz was forcing him to come forward, and it, and, he, and he was losing that fight. I'm not saying he well, was going to lose that it, fight, it, but it's he, because of his size. Because right. for for a bantamweight, he's very tall. Mm-hmm. If you're the taller guy, you don't go forward. You keep him on the outside. You pick right. him apart. You use your jabs, your long range attacks. If you're the shorter guy, and Mike Tyson is the best example, mm-hmm. you've got to go forward. You've got to bob and weave, get on the inside. But and, if they don't, that's, but if they, they don't, if they, if they don't come forward, now we're stuck at an impasse here. And I and and I I just think that Cheeto's going to do a better job of just managing the range and, and his aggressiveness. So Cheeto Vera is the bantamweight champion of the world. Come Saturday night, say you. I think so. That's the headline. Yeah, they have, write it. Okay. <laughs> write okay. it. I think so. Uh, Benoit Saint Denis as well. Dustin Poirier. Ooh. I can't wait for this one. That's a brilliant fight. Dustin Poirier said, alluded to to TMZ Sports that if he loses this fight, he might retire. Yeah. 35 years old, three fights with Conor McGregor. The last two, he probably made some good money. The third fight, he probably made a shit ton, mm-hmm. right? Um, been the interim champion, lost to Habib in the undisputed. He's made money. He's 35. He's had some losses. No disrespect, he's had an incredible career and I love his fighting style. I'm a huge fan. He's got the hot sauce. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's doing really well. He's got the good fight foundation. You ever had it? You ever had it? The hot sauce? I've never had it. It's pretty no. good. Yeah, do you like hot good. sauce? I do. I like spicy food and hot sauce. It's He's got a bunch of different flavors. It's pretty good. I don't mind a bit of spice, but anything stupid, it just it's just not enjoyable. No, it's got great flavor. It's not it's not unbearable, and it's got great flavor. You should uh, now we yeah. now this is the Dustin Poirier hot sauce <laughs> commercial. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try. It. We'll do a little test of hot sauces. There you go. That's what's coming up next week. And the one chip challenge is gonna return. Uh, I've still got one of those chips in the drawer. I got one too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put some Dustin Poirier's hot sauce on it. That. Uh, where, where was I? So, so boy, he's been there, done it, got the T-shirt. He really has. Legendary career. For sure, he'll be in the Hall of Fame one day. But he touched on, if he loses to Benoit Saint-Denis, that he's got to retire. And I kind of get it. I kind of understand. You know, because if he loses to Benoit, then you would assume that a title fight is going to be tricky to come by. Certainly yeah. with the lightweight division, with the depth of the division. Uh, and losing to Justin, losing to Benoit, you know, it's going to be a couple of years. Mm-hmm. 35, made the money, doesn't need to do it. I think when you look at everything, Benoit Sandini is the younger man, 35 versus 28. Mm-hmm. He's the bigger guy slightly, I think. He's the younger man. I mean, that that that's big. And he's just, a, and he's on a win streak. And five fights, five wins, five stoppages. And his best weapon is that left high kick. That yeah. just engaged and knocked him out with. Yeah, yeah. I I'm probably being the minority here. People that I'm picking Poirier, and I and I'm par- partially take all the skill set and the X's and the O's out of it. 
because he took this fight means he's seen something that he likes. Because this is a dangerous fight that no one else wants. He could have waited for a bigger name, a better, a better matchup, maybe stylistically. But Dustin Poirier is, uh, I think, at times has struggled with some motivation and and finding reasons to continue to do this. He wants, he said before, he wants one of three things: he wants title fight opportunities, big money fights, and 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 things to get him excited, and he, and things that make him nervous. Benoit Saint Denis is one of those guys that make him nervous, and and I and I think because. We've seen Saint Denis get a little bit reckless at times. I'm sorry, I've got to interrupt. The, the, the mispronunciation of Saint Denis is making Saint me Denis. nervous. Benoit, the French well, people are losing their I, minds right I, now. I'm not French. Benoit, say it after me. Benoit, Saint, Saint Denis, Denis, Saint Denis. <laughs> hey, that Ben what? Saint Denis. No, oh, Saint Denis is just a he's a wrecking machine. Kind of. Is that name right there? Saint Dennis? <laughs> you ain't no saint around here, son. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying that Dustin can't win this fight. And I gotta say, mm-hmm. I respect him big time for actually taking the fight. It's kind of like, but to a lesser extent, what Gagey did against Rafael Fazeev. Yeah. You know, giving these guys an opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I respect him big time. And I love watching him fight. I'm not saying that he can't win the fight. Dustin's so capable in every element of mixed martial arts. I'm just saying, you know, he just said he might retire. What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah. I mean, I get it. I understand it for sure. If, if one, I guess that was where I was going with that point. Like he wants one of three things. And, and I guess I got off track because I went into Benoit right away, but ben, although one, all three of those, <laughs> those things you may lose by losing on Saturday. Like title fight opportunities are probably gone. <laughs> big fight, big money opportunities may be gone with two 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 losses in a row and a loss over a guy that's ranked below you. And then guys that make you nervous, of course, you can always do that. But like a lot of these opportunities and things that he wants will be gone if he loses. So it makes sense that he would retire. And I think he's kind of been one foot in, one foot out for a while. And I don't mean that as he's not dedicated or focused or whatever. I mean that as... If things go a certain way, I think he would. I think if some things had gone a certain way, he would already have been retired. But I think he's kind of put these parameters on things. Okay, if this happens, I'll retire. And then it doesn't happen. Okay, if this happens, then I'll retire. And it doesn't happen. I think now this is another one of those things where, okay, if I lose to uh, Benoit Saint Denis, then I'll retire. And I think that if he does lose, I think he will. And I think if he wins, I think he'll stay and we'll see him in another big spot yeah. and probably go. If I lose this one, I'm going to retire. And he's just a badass of a human being, let's be honest. You know what he I is. mean? you got to think of some of the fights, you know, the Michael Chandler, the Justin Gagey. I mean, throughout his career, I mean, some of the fights have just been phenomenal. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So don't underestimate that man. Just because he lost to Justin Gagey, the human highlight reel, that doesn't mean shit. I really don't think it does. But he is 35. You mm-hmm. are 35. Yeah. Justin Gagey, I believe, is around that. Michael Chandler is 38, I think. Conor yeah, McGregor yeah. is 35. Uh, the point I'm making is, who's it? Volkanovski is 35. 35. There's going to be a lot of, and we say this every couple of years because people get older all the time. You know, mm-hmm. I remember back in the day, it was like, what's going to happen in the UFC when Rampage, when Chuck Liddell, when Anderson Silva, when George St. Pierre, when all of these legends have retired? I think we're getting to another crop of that couple of years guys enjoy these people right now enjoy these fighters that are putting it on the line because the expiration or the sell-by date or the the time to retire is upon us for some big names sadly yeah we're at that a lot of us are getting to that age where the the older the older crop of guys are like we're still hanging around a little bit and and there's still some fights to be won but there's not that many left there's not that and in the age that we're getting to is getting younger we really like the age of coming to the end of your career is getting younger because the new guys are get are getting younger. So we're talking about that Bernardo Solpai, yeah, twenty three years old. He's like the 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 epitome of the new breed of martial artists or right. mixed martial artists. He's a bantamweight, this, right? Yeah, bantamweight. We've spoken about this many times. Al- Aljamain's my age, thirty five, thirty three. But he's got he's, he's got the skill of somebody that's been doing this. I mean, his whole life, but he's been doing it for 25, 30 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how good that kid is. And that's how good these these new fighters that are signing, 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it was better younger. So it's not leaving us as much time as maybe some of the 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 eras that came before us had. All right. Anyway, should we uh should we go to Harrington for a non MMA story? I believe so. Uh, regrettably. Harrington, yeah. what have you got for us? You're muted. Oh, you're muted for one. <laughs> my God. My God. This is great. Take two. Not, Just fucking come no, back no, in, Harrington. It. Leave it in. Leave it in. Yeah. Bone. No. You are muted, bro. <laughs> His head is going to explode. Don't rub your face. Push buttons quickly. Come on. Push the buttons. Push the buttons. Push the buttons. Put hammer on. Hammer on. No. No. Herring bone. <laughs> This is, this is, see, ladies and gentlemen, this is why people, they're like, why is Bisping so mean to Harrington? And I'm like, I'm number one, I'm not mean. Number two, this is what we have to deal with when we're trying to do the show. It's just the, uh, he gives us so much to work with. <laughs> he does, he does. Not in your head feverish, he will not help the situation. To, he, his head, I can see it grow, it's swelling, it's about to pop. Well, 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 it doesn't matter. I have it here, right here. So we can just get rid of Harrington. And in the meantime, Harrington, you don't sit and enjoy the show. You don't look at Twitter. You don't look for Jake Paul tweets to retweet and worship him and talk about how great he is. Catch that you figure there. out the situation. You push some buttons. Uh, here is what he was going to read out. Let me find it. The son of the ninth richest man in the world is getting married. So for the wedding party... He paid $9 million to get Rihanna to perform. Oh, that's... Now, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, if you're a loaded guy, right? Yeah. Fair play, right? If you got that kind of money... It's not the steroid Olympics, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> the steroid it's fun. Olympics, that's still the go-to if, <laughs> if, if we make billions of dollars. Yeah, for sure. 100%. But I saw a tweet this morning... Um, I didn't know it was going to be in the notes. I saw a tweet this morning alluding to this, saying that the guy's pissed off because everybody there felt like Rihanna, for want of a better expression, didn't put her back into it. She was kind of unenthused. She just phoned it in? Apparently, she just phoned it in. Doesn't look like it. She's putting her back into that. Yeah. Looks to me like she's working hard. Do you see the tweet, Brian? I mean, what are people complaining at? I mean, listen, you wanted Rihanna. You want to choose $9 million, you got Rihanna. She yeah. showed up, she performed, she sang. Yeah. What more do you want? Do you need her to know. sweat more profusely? Yeah, I know. That looked like she was working to me. So everyone's just mad that she isn't, I don't know, putting more effort into it. That's really it. It, it seems like it's just to, people where, being where angry on the internet. Where's this nothing. concert happening, Brian? This is in India, uh, like a billionaire's kid. I think they paid, paid her $9 million Can to you come out. in India? I don't oh, think yeah. you can because uh, Rihanna was going to. Hold on. I have this other tweet that was pulled up that shows uh, a precarious situation where she's in the crowd twerking and uh, what, like right before she goes to actually shake her ass, she's she, like, she's like, she's like, oh, nah. uh, wait, no, no, no. Yikes. no, 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 no. I, I don't think uh, – in India, they have much of a problem with that kind of thing. I don't think it's quite as conservative and strict mm. as some some of you know because it's yeah. I don't know. A, That's what I was asking. I don't know. Yeah, I've never yeah, been to India. I, I would go though. I would like to go to India. I've never been to India, but every, I'm fair play to that guy, and I hope they had an amazing party. And well mm -hmm. done to Rihanna for getting nine million dollars, whether yeah. she phoned it in or not. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Well paid. done to her. Every time I've heard of somebody going to India, and I do want to go, the people are fantastic. I love the food. Yeah. But everyone always gets sick. Oh, really? That's what I've heard. Huh. Well, food poisoning. I've, I've, uh, apparently, uh, apparently, people get sick. It's like down in Mexico. A lot mm -hmm. of people were getting sick last week in Mexico yeah. City. It's the water, right, in Mexico? Apparently so, but you don't yes. drink the tap water in Mexico. I don't drink the tap water when I travel anywhere out of the country. I don't drink the tap water here, so so I guess there's that. I drink tap water in England. Well, I drink it out of my house, nowhere else. Yeah, I drink it out of the fridge. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the little yeah, like the, thing. yeah, it's filtered, and we got the reverse osmosis system at the. Sink. Oh God, look at that! <laughs> You're giving me shit about. I don't even know what car washes. I don't even, I don't even you know what that means. You got the reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Well, that would mean putting salt in. I would assume osmosis is where they use salt to suck water out, like weight cutting. Like weight cutting. That's what we do. 
Yeah. The process is called osmosis. Better fix that. Reverse osmosis will be putting salt in or putting fluids in. Look at you with your education and shit. I don't Get know. Out of I'm, here I with could, all that. I could be, I've got my glasses on, bro. Oh, I could yeah. put you in it. Uh, guys, yeah, no, uh, in my studies, I found that reverse osmosis is actually very, <laughs> very beneficial for the body. Um, sounds like you got some fancy water up there in Lincoln, yes, Nebraska. In, uh, Omaha. <laughs> Omaha's way know, better than Lincoln. <laughs> All right, today's episode is brought to you by Mando. Okay, Mando specialize in basically making you feel better. Sadly, there's some people out there, they struggle with BO, body odor. You don't want to be that guy. If you are that guy, Mando is here to save the day. In a clinical study, men who showered with soap and used Mando whole body deodorant in their pits, they had an odor score of 0 out of 10 after 12 hours. No odor. Men who showered with soap alone had an armpit odor score of 8 out of 10. Basically, because as the day progresses and your natural sweat starts to accumulate, you start to stink. Mando takes care of that. Mando is clinically proven to prevent odor for 72 hours, wherever you stink. The pits, the package, the feet and beyond. Let me tell you, you won't just smell of uh, B.O., You'll smell fantastic. The Mando Cleansing Bar, the Mount Fuji Aroma, that one's fantastic. I've got the stick right here, the Mount Fuji. The Mando Smooth Solid Deodorant Stick, and again, the Mount Fuji, that's the one that I like, right? It smells fantastic. It's going to last for up to 72 hours. You're going to smell great. The reality is the whole body deodorant Mando makes is seriously safe to use on your body anywhere. Pits, package, grundle and balls, belly button, butt cracks, stinky crevices, stomach folds on your feet. Created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal body odor was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's clinically proven to block odor all day long and control odor for 72 hours. That's three days. I recommend showering in those three days. I recommend reapplying. But apparently for 72 hours, if you don't want to shower, you're going to be good to go. Unlike some of the audience that try to mask the odor with a fragrance, Mando is formulated and powered by Mandelic soap to stop odor before it actually starts. So it's more like a pre-odorant. So look at this. I mean, they've got the science down. It's baking soda free. It's power and bend free. It's pH balanced for safe use below the belt. And it is clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. So right now, Give it a try. What more are you waiting for? So control body odor anywhere with at shop.mando and get $5 off your starter pack. That is over 40% off with the promo code BISPING at shopmando.com. Shopmando.com, that is the website. The code is BISPING for $5 off your starter pack. That is over 40% off. Block the deodorant, smell brand new, have it last for up to 72 hours and do it by going to shop. Mando.com and the promo code is Bispy. Did yeah. we tell everyone we actually hung out? We did not. Yeah, we did. Just the two of us. Hold on. Osmosis is the spontaneous passage of diffusion of water or other solvents through a semi permeable membrane, one that blocks the passage of dissolved substances. Uh, Harrington also added, the process by which forces water through a semi-permeable membrane, creating a stream of treated water called permeate and a stream of reject water called concentrate or brine. These systems can potentially remove water contaminants such as lead, volatile organic compounds, VLCs, PFAs, arsenic, etc., I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> Can I just tell everybody that we did hang out Friday night? I don't know what that means either. Uh, and the last time we hung out, we had steak in like Nashville or somewhere, I believe. Yeah, something like that. This time we hung out, we had steak in Vegas, and it was yeah. bloody good. It was real good. At the Durango Hotel and Casino. Anthony Smith is a generous tipper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, I tip good. I tip good, but I'm like, geez, Louise. I mean, you you go over the top, so it, it, we don't have to say the amount. But like, well, no, fuck it. Who cares? It was a nice steakhouse. We split the bill. It was 175 dollars each, right? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> what should we put on? Like 40 bucks each? And he's like, I'm putting 65. <laughs> Well, I, I had already written it. I didn't even ask. I just like, <laughs> I just wrote like the tip, and you were like, well, how much did you put there? And I was like. 
whatever it was. I don't remember what the number was. You were like, well, God, I got to scratch mine out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I put about, it was about 30% I put down, yeah. which I thought is decent. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm, but it I was don't nice know why, it's up. always been a good tipper. Yeah, Just what? the two of us. It was good. It was a good meal. Those meals are good too because they're like, they're long. So you just sit there. You can't go to a place like that when you're starving though. Because you're because it takes so that's, those kind of meals are processes. You got the little bit of bread, a little bit of appetizer. Uh, it was good though. We had a good time. No, it was very good. Should we try Hamilton again and see if he's managed to sort this out just for shits and giggles? I Hamilton, hope, are you there? Let's color. have a look at this. Oh, I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, and you have a voice. <laughs> Give us uh, what's going on with this scientist warning of a major ecological shift. Oh, so uh, apparently for the first time ever uh, over the weekend, they found a, uh, a orca uh, who was able to solo hunt a great white shark. Uh, typically, uh, if orcas do hunt uh, sharks, it's in like teams of two or greater. Uh, they like to kill a great white shark because their livers are super nutrient dense. And it's like exactly what what these giant whales need. So they're saying now because they figured out a way for whales to go one on one versus uh, these these massive killer sharks, uh, it could just change the way that everything is in, in uh, the ocean environment. No, but orc is another name for them, as we know, is killer whales. And they get mm-hmm. that name because they kill great white sharks. I don't understand. They also the kill whales. Well, they, they kill they, whales. Well, they figured out how to do it by themselves. That's the – here's the – I don't know why I'm so fascinated with orcas. You guys remember when orcas were sinking ships or like oh, yeah. boats? Oh, yeah, that's so right. So they, they were able to track that down to just one – single killer whale that taught other ones how to do it so they like there's this one that they believe had been hit by a boat like once or twice and then she came back and she was sinking boats and then the other ones watched her do it and so then they learned how to do it now they just keep passing along the information why are you laughing like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I'm thinking of the stupidest movie quote in my head. I'm very what? fascinated with what you're saying, but all I'm thinking of is that that um, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell in the movie The Other Guys, and he says something about a lion and a fish or something, and he's like, "Well, and Will Ferrell goes, well, you just lost that battle because our fish. We will develop a system, and we will get on land, <laughs> and we will work together, and we'll hold our breath. You know, not for long, but sixty seconds." 90 seconds, and that'll be enough to figure it out. And you know what? They're going to kill that lion, and they just got a taste of lion. And you f***ed up. You lost that battle. <laughs> I, I, I forget the exact wording of it. I'm totally butchering it, but it is a hilarious scene, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to listen to your right. very fascinating talk about orcas and killer whales, <laughs> but all I'm thinking about is Will Ferrell talking and the other guys. I apologize, sir. That's okay. I'll be Will Ferrell. But anyways. So, yeah, so tell me about these orcas. They're fascinating. Well, they are fascinating. Well, now they're kind killing. Of. Now they're killing like gray whites by themselves. That's probably a big problem for the shark population. So if they can I do it don't alone. believe that that would be the first time ever. That's probably just the first time that humans have observed. It's that. probably the first or, time we've ever seen it. I yeah, that we've got evidence of. I mean, yeah. the planet is millions and millions and millions mm-hmm. of years old. I don't know how long gray, great whites and orcas have been around. It's going to be a long time. Yeah. Maybe, I don't think that's the first. I mean, maybe you get other or you get this, you get these orcas teaching each other how to kill sharks one at a time. There's not going to be that many sharks around, probably. It's um, crazy. That's just fascinating to me. I don't know why. No, it is. It is. And orcas are smart as hell. Just whales in general. It's even crazier I mean? that they don't attack people. And they talk to people. Do they not attack people? I don't know. I reckon they would. There's no only the ones in captivity have yeah, ever killed people. There's no live. There's no documented the world, uh, Shimu or something. There's uh, blackfish. The well, that was the show, right? Yeah, yeah, but there's no documented attacks on humans in the wild, just in captivity. And they speak to each other. Do you want to give yeah. me a whale impression? Do you want to talk a bit of whale to me, Anthony? Come on, you can. Talk <laughs> I, I don't know what they sound no. like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give me some whale. You can talk whale, Anthony. Get a few beers, Anthony. will talk well to you all night. <laughs> oh, shit. God, Jesus Every time Christ. we talk about orcas, I, I don't know why. I just nerd out over here. People probably on the show are like, this guy is the whale guy. <laughs> we got to go to – I've been whale watching. I, I go whale watching. We do it probably once a year. They do it down here in Newport Beach, close mm-hmm. to us. And anytime we have family from England or anyone visiting, we'll go. let's go whale watching. 
because it's a nice day out. You get on the boat, it's not expensive, you know, and you sit there, you go out in the harbor and out to the ocean and you have a beer, you have a sandwich and you normally see some dolphins. Mm -hmm. Never seen a whale. Never? Never seen a whale. I'm really excited seeing dolphins. Oh, you see excited. a lot of dolphins, man. There's hundreds of, of them just jumping out of the man- water like I crazy. I seen manatees one time. That was pretty cool. Outside yeah. of uh, Jacksonville. We were fishing. We on like a little fishing charter and seeing a whole shit ton of manatees. But they you know were, what we should- it wasn't like in the wild. They were like by houses. They were on the do water. Do you know what we should do? Do you know what we should do? And I'm serious about this. This is not one of our wild expeditions. That will never happen. Clay Guida has a company, Thrills and Gills. And Gills, yeah. Thrills and Gills. And he's invited me a couple mm-hmm. of times. And I said, I'll make it happen yeah, down off too. the coast of Florida. Has he invited you as well? Yeah, we have the same manager. So he, so he always is talking about trying to get me out fishing. We got to go and do that. We got to go do that. We should. I love it. I love fishing. Yeah. I want to take Lucas with me, though. It's going to kill the vibe a little bit. Nah. You know, he'll be 14. He'll be fine. He can do his job. Get him a, get him a fake ID. Night. Have a yeah. good time at night. He'll be fine. Get a few beers down his neck. He'll be good. <laughs> um, right. MMA. <clears throat> what have we got? Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou is happening next weekend, by the way. Um, sorry, not Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua versus right. Francis Ngannou. Did you see the uh, promo for that? No, I haven't seen the promo yet. Oh, did you You saw the, the old one for Usyk and Fury, right? But that one was awesome. This one is just as awesome. It's basically oh, really? a Street Fighter 2 um, theme. Like a, yeah. Brian, uh, Brian, do you want to bring it up and just play a little bit of it? It is brilliant. It's fantastic. It's Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou as Street Fighter 2 characters, and they just follow them all over the world. Here it is. Let's have a look at this. Francis. Yes. Hope you're enjoying New York, my friend. Oh, oh this is I've awesome. got good news. Look. The fight's on. It's a done deal. We got agent. I'll be here many times anyway. Whoa. There's AJ. No way. All right, that's way, way better. (laughs) This is awesome. Wow. Yeah, isn't this sick? This is awesome. I mean, as a Street Fighter 2 fan myself, I'm a big Street Fighter 2 fan. This is incredible. But the production, the creativity. Yeah, the, the money that would go into something like this. <laughs> and just, just, just for Engarnu and Joshua to be a part of promotional material like this. I mean, this is, you know... This is helps next expand. level. Oh, it's next level. But if you're going to get into acting or something like Ngannou's already done, this is mm-hmm. like, it all helps with those kind of skills, you know. Look at this. Look, they're all over the world. This is insane. This is, yeah, you're, you're right. This is way better than the Fury Usyk one. I don't know if it's better. It's it's up there, though. Do you prefer this one? Yeah, I think I prefer this one. I think it's almost done now. Chorukan! Boom. Game over. Oh, Isn't that's that sick? incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it, why, I always wonder how come the UFC doesn't do some cool stuff like that. Every once in a while for the really big fights. I've only remember seeing it two or maybe three times. We maybe did it was one. two Connor fights. Oh, yeah, no, they did some. Uh, when Jose fought Connor and mm-hmm. they're walking through the streets of uh, on the Las Vegas Strip. Yep. Yeah. The the big, big fights like that. I mean, Saudi Arabia, they, they've just got crazy money. You know what yeah. I mean? Insane budgets. Uh, well, it's not even budgets. Limitless money to spend mm-hmm. them promoting them. But, but for them, I think the bigger plays, it's not about just the boxing. It's about creating and turning Riyadh into a destination. It's not yeah. just about the box. It's about turning it into – so that's like tourism money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to say, hey, people, Riyadh's on the map. Come mm-hmm. and visit here. You know, we got boxing. we got alcohol now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so 
You might not get Rihanna twerking though. You, maybe not. She's not going to put the full work in. But you're going to get great boxing promos. Here's something we've never spoke about, and best of luck to both men, and well done to everybody involved in that sensational promo. Um, video games, Anthony. Are you much of a gamer? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. What do you like to play? Um, well, you, Mostly first-person shooters. I get into a little bit of golf and some of the F1 racing games. Um, but I've been into Halo for a long time. So actually, my six-year-old's kind of getting into nerding out on games a little bit so we've been been trying they like the ufc game the kids in mortal Kombat. you gotta grab hell divers hell divers okay yeah, that's yeah. what lucas is playing right now He's me too right he said me too yeah lucas loves it um i just had to buy a second remote because i said bring the play ps5 downstairs i got sent a ps5 it's mine but it's in mm-hmm. lucas's bedroom i said bring it downstairs i said i'm bored out of my head i said i want to play some video games they look good yeah. so we ordered a remote but he still won't let me bring it down um do you ever play any street fighter 2 because i will whoop your ass on it you'll probably whoop my ass but i have played yeah i used to have these uh in my old house i had these little miniature um arcades and I had Street Fighter 2. It was one of the arcade games I had. So like you can sit on like a little chair. Me and my kids would be nerding out on there. It was fun. Who was your character of choice? I just, whoever. I just picked whoever was on there. Oh, yeah. Ken and Ryu all there for me, man. Dragon <laughs> Punches. Uh, See, uh, I, I wasn't, when I was younger, I wasn't super into Street Fighter because I'm a little bit younger than you. So we were oh, like, thanks. we were like into Mortal Kombat a lot. Mortal Kombat's good. Yeah, yeah. No, I do I do miss playing some video games. I haven't played them in ages. I was obsessed when I was a kid, so might not even bloody do it, though. I get back into it because I've got better things to do. Right, Harrington, should we try this again? Number three, Alex Pereira, Israel Adesanya. Yeah, so I'm here. No, so Alex Pereira said uh, that he's, he's very open to the idea of training uh, with Israel Adesanya. Uh, he says that there are two guys who are both highly skilled. They can learn a lot from each other. Um, he also says that the um, uh, he says that he's only willing to do it if the possibility of them ever fighting again has been put to bed. He made the point that when he won the light heavyweight title, he said, come on up. You don't have to fight anybody else. You get an immediate title shot. And Izzy said no. Uh, so because of that, he believes that that their fighting uh, history may be done and they can start working together, making them both better fighters in the gym. Interesting. Interesting because they're one on one in MMA. Mm-hmm. I find it kind of surprising. No, no judgment on his fighting achievements or heart or that he's ducking Israel or anything like that. That's not where I'm going. I'm just saying that shocks me to hear Pereira wanting to actively close the door on that rivalry. I, 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 it actually doesn't surprise me that much. I Because I think him, him, of course he wants to make money and, and – I know that he understands the economics of fighting. And so when he offered Israel that title shot, I know that there was a little bit of that too. Um, but I think we've gotten into this before that uh, I, I truly believe that it was him g- maybe extending an olive branch to Izzy after him winning the title. And say, like, oh, like Izzy was kind of down on his luck. And, and there was that messed up translation, um, yep. you know, and it was really him almost doing him a favor saying, Hey, you helped me when I was down. Now you're down. I'm going to help you come get a title shot. Of course, there's some economics and some selfishness that is there, but I also do believe that he wants to help him. And I think if he believes they're not going to fight and Izzy doesn't want to, that that I think they would put that to bed. I also believe that. So I I've always wanted to train with Glover to share after we fought, we talked about it several times, but then now there's this thing where Alex went up to two Oh five and at some point, there may be a time that comes where Alex and I will fight. So I haven't been able to go and spend any time there because I would love to train with Alex. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think he's got an incredible skill set that could really help me. But I can't do that until I know we're not going to fight. So I understand him saying that. But I don't know that they know each other so well and they possess very similar skill sets. I don't know that. It would really matter that much, but 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 the the, the the reason it surprises me, and listen, I think it's very commendable of Pereira to be so mature and like you know bygones be bygones, and let's train together and help each other out. That's that's beautiful to see, and as a human being, I commend him. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm just saying from my perspective, if I was Alex Pereira, and the last thing that happened between the two of us, and we were one apiece, was me getting flatlined and knocked out cold, right? 
I'd be like, bro, we got to run that back one more time. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that means I'm a shitty human <laughs> being. But as a fighter, I'd be like, we're f- doing this again. Right. Because yeah. I got you three out of four. <laughs> mm-hmm. The last yeah. one, the last one, the world remembers me going to sleep. Yeah. We're f- running that one back, buddy. <laughs> Why don't you come up to 205? I will be chatting all kinds of shit. As I say, that probably means Alex is a better guy, is in control of his emotions and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just saying the fight a bit inside you, that little the mm-hmm. devil on your shoulder. I'm surprised to hear him say that. I'm surprised he's not going, Bra- brother. He doesn't even talk what am i saying he doesn't speak what are you talking about uh, uh, uh. Yeah. any drama will speak for him yeah, um, yeah I've, th- th- that part surprises me yeah yeah but i mean if you can't i mean you can't really chase him if he doesn't want to fight maybe he just was like hey he doesn't want to do it he's not coming up to 205 we've had that experiment who knows maybe he's just better a better man than we are yeah well this is definitely a better man than we are we you know, better man than you, anyway. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I tell you what, Jamal Hill, Alex Pereira. Mm-hmm. I Great think that's fight. a phenomenal. We, we've talked about this before, but I think that's a sensational fight. You know Jamal better than I do. Mm-hmm. You know how he's doing in training. Have you spoke to him recently? No, which tells me that training is going very well. Because he's if if Jamal's out hanging around, it means he's not training that much. Um, yeah. So I haven't heard from him. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I haven't seen him anywhere. Uh, I've worked a couple shows recently and haven't seen him. So uh, it tells me he's dialed in. He's locked in a hole somewhere and, and getting to work, which is what, exactly where he needs to be. He's uh, exactly what he needs to do. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at you a quick fire style, if you okay. don't mind. Yeah. UFC 299, guys, goes down this weekend. UFC Vice City, UFC 299. Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Chito Vera in the main event. Opening up the main card, we have P.O. Yan, former champion, taking on Song Yudong. Anthony Smith, who wins that fight? I think P.O. Yan. I think he's just too good on his feet. He's got a great takedown defense, too, and I think he's had a little bit of a bad run, and I think... I think at some point that at that at some point in time that run has to end, and I think it's Saturday. I agree. I do agree. Moving on, we got Gilbert Burns. This is a tough one. This is a tricky one because Gilbert Burns, who doesn't love this man, and he's a hell of a fighter. Injured his arm against uh, Bilal. He's mm-hmm. coming back with a bang. He came on here recently. He's been working hard. He looked exhausted when he came on. God bless him. Taking on Jack Della Maddalena. Equally as nice a guy, equally as ferocious a fighter. Of course, nowhere near the level of jiu-jitsu or grappling than Gilbert Burns. But on the feet, the man's special with the boxing. What do you think with that one? Yeah, you know, uh, there's not too many people that I would pick over Jack Della Maddalena because uh, I do really enjoy his style. I think that he's magical sometimes. But Gilbert Burns is is a much better wrestler than, um, God damn it. Oh my God, Basil Hafez. Basil, my old my old training partner, just lost Dude, it. Dude, I've, I've got the knowledge. Yeah, uh, he's a better wrestler than Basil, and he's a better grappler than Basil. Basil was uh, able to take him down, pass his guard, take his back, mount him. If Basil can do that six months ago, Gilbert Burns can do it on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I, I see you thinking. Of course, then we move on. I mean, Gilbert Burns. Remember what he did, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson as well. Mm-hmm. That was an absolute yeah. shutout. And because- after Gilbert loses, he comes back quietly and with a vengeance that guy will rattle off three or four before we even realize it happened and he will be he gets angry inside and doesn't ever come out earlier point of discussion 37 years old another guy that isn't going to be around for too much longer yeah, we don't have sad day Gilbert when, Burns fights. when El Dorino hangs it up uh Kevin Holland Michael Page Ben and Page excited for this one tremendous amount of hype around MVP and for good reason right he's a showman He's got incredible striking. The stuff he does is like the shit you see in a movie, like a martial arts film, but he does it for real in the octagon. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, but he's a cocky bastard when he fights. And I love that juxtaposition, how he's able to just transform his character. Uh, But how do you see this one? Because I think on paper, when you look at his competition, this might be the toughest fight of Michael Venom Page and Kevin Holland. Yeah, this is uh, by far his toughest opponent. If you, if you look at the strength of schedule, I think that MVP has kind of been stuck in other organizations, fighting the best opponents that he possibly can, um, but not the level of guys like Kevin Holland. We did see him lose 
um, in bare knuckle versus Mike Perry, who's not known as a really pretty technical striker, totally different sport. So maybe that changes a lot of things. But um, I think Kevin Holland is is the better grappler. Um, I think that they're striking. I think Kevin Holland's a better finisher, um, at least with his boxing, for sure. So I think Michael Bennett Page is a better kicker. I'm a little more diverse in the spinning attacks, but I, I do think Kevin Holland gets it done. Uh, all three of you. D- did you see the fight with MVP and Diego Lima in Bellator? I never saw that one, so so I'm not sure how that went down. I think there I'm was assuming, two of them, right? Th- yeah, there might have been, but I'm assuming he got out-wrestled, right? Is, no, he got knocked how? out. Did he? Oh, did he really? Shit. Yeah, he was uh, doing some dumb shit. And Diego Lima threw an inside leg kick. Got got knocked out. Yeah, and round he went two. Down to, went down to his knee. He, Diego Lima threw an inside leg kick. And it kind of it popped his leg out, and he went down to one knee. And before he could get up, Diego Lima hit him with an uppercut on his way up. Douglas Lima. Or Douglas, not Diego. Douglas, my bad. Is that the brother of Diego Lima? Uh, I do believe they're brothers. Yeah, here it is. Oh, let's have a look. Leg kick out. Yeah. Oh, his outside leg kick. Man. Yeah. Do that again, Brian. It's nasty. Yeah, I forgot it was an outside kick. Boom. Bop. I mean, that, I mean, I mean. Listen, he capitalized on an amazing opportunity. Just, just, just do it again, because I want to see if you can freeze frame a little bit just before he jumps. What was he trying to do? He was trying was to that? jump in and throw a, to, a right hand across his body because he was so he's trying bladed. To, he's trying to leap in with the back hand. Yeah, yeah. And then he did he kick? He kicked his leg from under him. Lima, before he yeah. Lima kicked him right here. Boom. Yeah, there it is. Bop. Yeah. Hey, fair play to Lima. What an uppercut that was. And I, think they re- I think they rematched, and I think Lima beat him in a decision. No, no, no. Uh, MVP won. MVP he won the, won the, he won the yeah, rematch. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking at his record here. Yeah. yeah, yeah Lima so. was good. When Lima was on, that dude was one of the most dangerous welterweights in the world. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, without question. Well, thank you for that, uh, Anthony, for giving your predictions. I'll save mine for Bloody Thursday. Otherwise, we're going to have nothing to talk about. All right, today's episode is sponsored by Buy Optimizers that specialize in giving you every form of magnesium in which you are deficient in. Yes, that's correct. Most of us are magnesium deficient, and that is why you are not performing at your optimum level, and that is why you are definitely not sleeping properly because there is one phase of sleep that almost everybody fails to get enough of, and that phase of sleep is deep sleep. If you don't get enough, you're probably always going to struggle with cravings, a slow metabolism, premature aging, or even worse conditions. Now, why don't most people get enough of this one important phase of sleep? Well, a big reason, as I said, is the magnesium deficiency because over 80% of the population is deficient. And magnesium increases GABA, which encourages relaxation on a cellular level, which helps you sleep. It's critical for sleep. And let me tell you, it's going to give you some wild dreams as well. So there's an extra little bonus incentive if you want to have some mental adventures when you go to bed. Magnesium plays a key role in regulating the body's stress response system. Those with magnesium deficiency usually have higher anxiety and stress levels, which negatively impact your sleep as well. Now, the main thing is to know is that there's many different types of magnesium. Most magnesium supplements that you buy, they're going to have one or two forms of magnesium, but the reality is your body needs all seven forms. And that is why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough brought to you by by Optimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of of magnesium that designed to help calm your mind, help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. The deep sleep benefits are very noticeable, and you can get involved right now. So right now, you're going to go to com slash BYM to get the magnesium you need that you are deficient in. com slash BYM to get a better night's sleep. com slash BYM to go off to dreamland, to get recovered, to get the deep sleep, to reduce the anxiety and be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Sort out the magnesium deficiency. Get every type of magnesium under the bloody sun. Get it all in one stop by going to Breakthrough dot com slash b y m are you going to miami um, no damn i've never been to miami me either that's why i'm excited oh God. never been there never been there i hear it's fantastic yeah i'm excited harrington I'm and brad have you guys ever been to miami tonight. do you know saturday night uh because we were talking about you know how the ufc events used to have names 
Mm -hmm. And I brought up like UFC 40 Vendetta. I think that was Tito Ortiz versus Ken Shamrock. And then John Annick goes to uh, DC. All right, so so if we were to do that for this weekend, what are we calling uh, UFC 299? And DC goes, Vice City. Uh, and I don't know why I thought of that Grand Theft Auto bit. That's so, what I was you know, thinking. He goes, oh, shit. Here we go again. So I just went, <laughs> here we go again. And TNT Sports made like a meme of it, right? And they put it on social media. So I reposted it and all the rest of it. And some people have come back giving, giving me shit going, oh, nice try, Bisbee. That was actually San Andreas. I'm like, oh. so fucking so what? what? So what? Whatever. I know. Get a life. Yeah. That, either way. Close enough. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go again. And here we go again with the questions. Is there anything that we haven't got to, Harrington? Let me just do this. Let me just do breaking news. But, Harrington, come on. Is there any stories that are breaking that we don't know about, that we haven't uh, got to, that we should have got to? Uh, no, I mean, there was, there's, no, nothing. <laughs> Hold on. What's this? What's this? Hold on. He Uh-oh. needs to be released from the UFC. MMA community reacts to Jarzino Rose and Strike. Are they talking about his opponent? Oh, right. They're talking about his opponent. Oh, the man lost the first lost one of his one career. Fight. Leave him alone. Lost one fight. You know, Get out of here with to... that bullshit. I know, I know. Kick your man while he's down, why don't you? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. All right. Well, if you have a question, send it in to bympod at gmail.com. And if you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you find podcasts, make sure you subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating, positive review. It really helps us out. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new video drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes you can't find anywhere else, completely ad-free and totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM. Get a seven-day free trial. Check out over 20 great shows on the network. All right. So first question, we got, we got two questions here today. First question is from James from Cornwall. Cornwall. Nice place. Hi, guys. This is James from Cornwall, England. Longtime listener, massive fan of your podcast. I've been a massive fan of yours, Michael, since tough. I followed your career. Just want to say congratulations to everything you've done for the sport. Um, it still bugs me you didn't get a mention on Sports Personality of the Year. Still pains me to this day. Uh, I love your commentary. I'm so pleased you're doing well. I just got a question for you, Michael. Um, when, you, when you're commentating, who decides on who's going to interview the fighters after the fight? Sometimes it's you, sometimes it's Felder. It seems to be anyone. Would you prefer that it was you? Or do you like to kick back and chill out while someone else interviews the fighter? Um, and one last thing. I was watching an England program the other day called QI. And your home t- town was mentioned and I never realized this, but it's actually spelt Clit Hero. Are you and the guys aware of that? Cheers, <laughs> guys. Just keep up the good work. I'll keep listening. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, just Google Clithero. And I don't mean the the spelling, Brian. Let's get an image of Clithero to give the people some context. But yeah, it is. It's C-L-I-T-H-E-R-O-E. And it's very childish, James, from Cornwall. All right. Very, Anthony likes it's it. Funny. Yeah, he's just like, just so you know, I know that you know how to spell it, but I'm going to tell you again. It's Clit Hero. I remember the first time I ever put it on Twitter. People were like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if the shoe yeah. fits. <laughs> yeah. um, what did he ask? Who, makes, right, that, who I, makes the call in the interviews? Yeah, yeah. Well, with well, this kind of. Uh, I don't want to pull the curtain back too much on the production, but, you know, it's kind of, obviously, if it's a pay-per-view, then it's Joe Rogan. If Joe Rogan's not there and DC's there, then it's DC. You know, it's kind of a meritocracy, a hierarchy, hierarchy, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, If it's me uh, and Brendan, or if DC's DC's not there, I'll do it, right? Mm -hmm. If If it's Joe Rogan, if Rogan's not there, it's DC. If DC's not there, it's me. If I'm not there, it's Felder. And if Felder's not there, then... Then there's ben, no interviews because they're not ben, letting ben Dom Fitzgerald's do it. Ben Fitzgerald's going in. Because <laughs> they're not letting Dom do it. Uh, and to answer the question, um, yeah, I would love to do it every single time. That's one of my favorite parts. 
going into the octagon and speaking to the fighter. And certainly when, you know, like, for example, I've never interviewed Derek Lewis. Like, oh, no, I have, I have. But, you know, people like that, you know, when you have those viral moments, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or speaking to the fighter, certainly like in, in London or in Paris, when you speak to the hometown fighter that's just got a win and the crowd goes amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I love you, I love being involved. Could you imagine the visuals of Dominic Cruz interviewing like Alexander? Oh, don't, don't. We're not doing that. We're not bad-mouthing commentators, Anthony. <laughs> I'm not bad-mouthing him. He's just little. Wouldn't that be no. funny? He's like, uh, how do you uh, how do you feel about your performance? Well, he could do the <laughs> Megan Ali. Yeah, no, no. We could do the Megan Alivi. She stands on boxes. On boxes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She stands on a box. You don't see the box out of camera. Uh, who else does that? They bring a box into the octagon? No, 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 she doesn't no, do in rings. Behind the, no, they, the, backstage. the backstage interviews, a lot of the time they have a uh, little box. Depend on the person. Laura stands on a box sometimes. Laura stands on a box, yeah. I'm sure Charlie yeah. probably does sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. You know what I mean? John Anik sometimes. I've had Anik on a box next no. to me on a desk before. <laughs> I swear Don't God. lie. I Don't God. lie. <laughs> yeah. He was pissed about it too. I think they took it out shortly afterwards because he was not happy, but he was right next to me <laughs> on the desk. Who were you working with? So it's you, it was me, Anik, Chael, and I think Michael Eves. So it was like three so, guys that were six two to six four. Yeah, I'm gonna say because Michael Eves is a big dude as well. And shout out Michael Eves, by the way. What yeah. a great guy he is. Michael he is. Eves, ESPN uh, regular host and feature on there. He's a solid human being. That guy. Yeah, he does a lot of basketball and golf. And uh, you know, one time in Bristol, he texted me, and he, we were working together there, and that's where he lives. He said, "Hey, come out to my spot. I got this little like kind of bar bar restaurant area. Man, he's the type of guy that if he if you're in his his city or his place, he won't let you do anything. He'll you come there. He buys your dinner. He buys your drinks. Make sure that you get home safe. Like he he like he really feels like a like he needs to personalize that. Like you're in my area. You're my city. I take care of you. He's a really good dude." Yeah, he's a real stand up guy. Speaking of standing up, so John Anik was standing on a box. For a short period of time, he was. Oh, uh, I, I could, I could just see John Anik getting. I hope he doesn't get that. mad at me. I'm just giving him shit. But yeah, he was. Oh, well, you've just told the world. I mean, we all know how well, tall John Anik is. We I mean, know that John Anik, he ain't a very, he ain't a very big feller. Incredible well, human being. He ain't a real big. He, he big is guy. an incredible human being. I'll he tell is. you that right now. But he's not the smallest person in the world. Far from it. You know no, what I mean? He's, he's not, not ridiculously feller. short. No. And all you got to do is a quick Google search. Here we go. John Anik, he's five foot nine. Well, no, he's not. He's not. <laughs> that's what it says yeah, well, right can't, here. Can't believe John Anik, you read. <laughs> he's famously known as an American mixed martial arts commentator. He started at ESPN over five years. How old is John Anik? Born on the 3rd of July, 1978, Boston, Massachusetts. Can you do a Boston accent? I can't do a Boston accent, but I love listening to Boston accents. Me there's too. a couple of people. There's a guy, like a couple on Instagram, and the the, <laughs> the husband's whole shtick is to make his wife say things and in, in like with her accent and make fun of her for it. Yeah, it's, really, yep. it's really fun. Oof. I tell you what, if, if, if this might be bullshit on his height because his net worth is popping. <laughs> this has got his net worth. Hey, it might be. Oh, might be my God, he is a must. Yeah. Quite a bloody impressive he deserve, amount. And he of money. deserves every penny. Do you know what he does? Because he literally is the man. You know, in terms of commentating that guy, like the the, the respect that he has for the sport and the fighters, mm -hmm. uh, just little things like pronunciations and whatnot. And the reason he gets on his high horse, not his high horse, that's a, the wrong term, but the reason he's so, uh, the reason he ensures that it's said correctly. He's like, listen, you got to give these guys their respect. This is their name. It has to be pronounced correctly. The mm -hmm. respect he has for the sport, for the fighters, for the job itself. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and then just how good he is. Right? And whenever I commentate with John, it's amazing because you're there. You won't see it at people at home. When, when like they do the out of vision reads, they call it, and it might show the arena and whatever, and you hear John Annick's voice. He's there and he's screaming he is, the energy. He's the energy so from into it. He's yeah. so into I've been saying for a long time now, John Anik is the best TV personality, like live TV personality across all sports in the entire world. He is the best. The, the amount of – and I don't say that just because he's my friend. I have never encountered someone that is so prepared and so good at their job. He's so good at his job, he makes other people's jobs that work with him easy. Like anytime John is the host on anything that I do, 
I know for a fact that I'm, I'm, I'm smooth sailing because it's, he makes it so easy. Well, 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 hold on. You were smooth sailing because of me that one time as well. I went, Anthony, just look at me. Just look at me. Yeah, I'm saying host. I'm saying host. I know, no, I know. I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. Host. I'm joking. You know, I am. Uh, you so said I just Googled. Career, Mike. I've told everybody. Well, yeah, I know. I know. But we like I to told read. everyone. I like gotta, to have my name thrown. You got to remind uh, me. So I, I just Googled, and I, I 100% agree with you. Top sports commentators on TV. Oh, here we go. Top 10 play-by-play announcers of all time. I won't know any of these people. Jim Nance. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. CBS Sports. Keith Jackson. Mm -mm. Never heard of him. Number one's not John Anik. The the list is garbage. Brent Musburger. I'm sure he's great at his job. Never heard of him. Joe Jack Buck. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's Old Jackie Bucky. Yeah. Joe Buck. Dick Enberg. Mm-mm. Don't know him. I don't know anyone. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not that kind of guy. Five, Mary Albert, more of Albert, Pat Summerall, Al Michaels, Mike Doc, Emmerich, and number one is Vin Scully. Number one is John Anik. Number one's fucking John <laughs> Anik. We need number one is it. John Anik. Stephen A. Smith's in here, Michael Strahan, Jim Rome, Tony Romo, Jim Nance. See, most of those guys are analysts. So. <coughs> they are. They yeah. are. Uh, Brian, mm-hmm. we got another question, please. Yeah, we okay. took that off the rail. Sorry, Brian. That's no, all I like good. It. It's good. That's good. <coughs> Harry, Harrington did such a shit job with the notes this week. I'm sorry, <laughs> Harrington. He sent them. He sent them one minute before, right? There's nothing there. There is no notes. There is no notes. Well... Uh, this second question is a uh, is a follow up from last week. This is uh, Abby from the Fight Space. Oh okay. God! What's up, BYM Pod? It's me, Abby, again. And the last several months have seen so many former UFC stars entering other organizations and finding immense success. Uh, Sam Alvey's got the Karate Combat 205 belt. We've got Ike Villanueva over at BYB Extreme with their heavyweight title. And most recently, Junior Dos Santos took on Alan Belcher, the man who needs to focus on having a fight with his tattoo artist for that abomination on his arm. For their heavyweight (laughs) title and won by knockout. It was an incredible night of fights. What do you think of all of these former UFC legends finding their place within new combat sports? And Mikey B., I can't believe you don't think I'm about that life. And this was the original BMF's reaction to finding out that I want Donald Cerrone to brand me in Arlington. Uh, I'm going to let Cowboy Cerrone yes. brand me with this if oh, he makes his no. eight-second ride. What do you think? What do you think? It's so <laughs> By the way, Jorge Gamebed Masvidal will be joining us on Thursday. Nice. Thursday's episode of Believe You Me. I mean, it seems like the perfect guy. Right. He's Mr. Miami. It's going down in Vice City. Here we go again. Um, what was the question? Oh, what oh. we think about the other legends. Well, I think it's fantastic, and I'm very, very happy for them, and I'm mm-hmm. happy that fans still get to see them plow, ply their trade. I'm happy that they get to make money. There's no negatives to it. It's brilliant. Uh, I mean, good for them. Good yeah. for them. I'm, I'm right along with you. I don't have much to add there. I, anytime any of our um, – any of, our, any of our peers, our brethren. Community. Your community. Peers. Peer, I already said that one. Uh, anytime they get a they, – Brothers. When they, when they don't – when they don't – whether it doesn't work out in the UFC or they, they don't stay. Outcasts. <laughs> no. <laughs> rejects. <laughs> they're not rejects. They're good people. Has beans. Uh, yeah, maybe. Is never was is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Sorry. Any, sorry. Anytime that they get a go somewhere else – and continue to make money and have success and support their families and and do it by doing the thing that they are best at and that they love. I support it. That's why I, I tune into Bare Knuckle. I tune into these other organizations. I tune into. I want the slap fighting guys to get paid. You know what I mean. I want them to support mm-hmm. their families. Like, I want everybody to eat. I want everybody yeah. to eat. And and if that means it's in other organizations, and so be it. I want you to do well. Um, so I guess that's that's what yeah. I had. Also, Abby. Uh, had a conversation with my management team uh, at some point in time over the weekend. And I think I'm going to do an interview with her because she's been oh. such a a loyal listener. Okay. Okay. Well, just be careful with that. 
Okay, because once you open the door, they don't leave you alone. I've done this a few times. I'm like one of those guys. I'll give an interview, especially mm-hmm. when they're, they're young and they're up and coming and they want to get a, off the ground. So I've yeah. like hooked you a few random people. I said, yeah, sure, sure. And like, they're like, oh my God, that's fantastic. I have this one guy in fucking Poland. He won't stop. I said, like, dude, <laughs> dude. It was a one-time deal. I'm not <laughs> yeah. becoming a fucking semi-regular. Um, Harrington. We didn't have this in the notes. Speaking of Jorge Masvidal, and uh, I echo everything you just said, it's it's great to see fighters still being able to make a living. It's brilliant, mm-hmm. right? Because it's hard. It's a tough path. Um, Masvidal's been in the news. He's trying to go at Chael Sonnen. He's been it's talking similar. about Colby Covington again. Uh, Harrington, are you there? And if you are, what is the situation with Masvidal and Chael Sonnen? Because I haven't been following it. Uh, I am you furiously... I'm furiously Googling right now. I don't okay. have the only I'll, thing I I'll, have I'll, is. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Sorry, you're Harrington. You're late, I'm bro. Sure you're the... So, Masvidal oh, and wait. Chill have always kind of had a little bit of riff over the years, and they've kind of patched it up, and then they go at each other, and then they patch it up. Um, but I know that in the behind the scenes, they kind of helped each other a little bit just with some, you know, some marketing, some media stuff. Um, and Chill, or when Chill went at Ariel, it really pissed off. Oh, well, yeah, I remember that. When Chael went at Ariel and they had that big old dust up, I think that reignited some of the issues that Chael and Masvidal had because let's just be honest here, Chael has failed a lot of drug tests. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. Masvidal like, absolutely hates people that, that fail PD tests. He's been very outspoken about it. He'll scream and holler and fight you in the streets over it. So I think that coupled with him kind of coming at Ariel, it's no secret that Masvidal really does like Ariel. Um, so then Chael responds and then they go back. That's kind of how it starts. And then it usually goes on like that for a while and they'll patch it up. Yeah. But yeah. I'm working with Chael this weekend in oh. Miami. So Chael's going to be there. Masvidal's going to be there. And I hope that I'm standing somewhere in the cut so I can watch it from the outside. Herringbone, are you there? Yes, sir. I wanted to bring you on. Anthony kicked you off. I'm like, don't do that to Herringbone. He's, well, he's going mean, to start getting his I tried to, I tried to save him because he didn't know. You didn't no, I appreciate Any, it. Uh, do, do you have anything to answer? Yeah, you gave me enough time to pull up this quote from Chael. Uh, he did say, <laughs> either way, policy will still be applied. I will not let him get close. I cannot trust Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal will be in Miami next week where I will be. Jorge Masvidal will be at the fight next week where I will be. I mean, it sounds to me like we're starting to bring peace together. Now, he will have to wave to me. I will have to send up an usher to bring him a few levels down so we can get a little bit closer to the action where I'll be seated, but we can have that chat. I will be in the one in the nicely tailored suit. He will be the one in the hood with his eye up looking like a thug that I need to keep an eye on. (laughs) Very eloquently put. Sounds like jail. Sounds like jail. That was good. That was good. Uh, Brian, do we got one more? It seems like that's that's all we're gonna air today, Mike. Oh, always oh, questions. Uh, okay, oh, oh, so we right, got some right. weird ones. All right, okay, okay. You want a really weird oh, one? No, I don't want a really weird. Oh, come on, yeah, yeah. Let's do a really weird okay. one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Actually, I was just baiting you. We probably don't want to play this guy's question. No, but you, you've said over the years we get some really strange ones. Give yes. us a strange one. Oh, I'd, have to, I'd have to go back and get a really weird one. I don't have one pulled up. You don't have one keyed up? Not a really. Jeez, geez, okay. Please, please, please. No. Well, maybe next okay. week, Brian, have one keyed okay, up. Okay, hey. How about okay. this one? This okay. is this is from one. Oh, man. This is from one from a guy named Stoned Martian. Okay. Okay. So I'm here from the Bryce Mitchell crowd, and I do have a question for you. So, first off, I just got to say, Harrington, you get way too much hate, and you don't deserve any of it. You do a great job producing this show, so props to you, brother. And, You're not helping uh, my case. Bisbang and Smith, um, I'm curious to, th- to see as what you think of living off the ground and why you, would, you aren't already doing it when the government's putting this much poison in our food. It shouldn't be able to go on like this. I think it's super up and i think that we need to make a stand against the government well y'all what y'all need to do first of all go on go on i just want to make a note that we do not advocate for making a stand against 
the government <laughs> as believe you me. I just, wanted, I just wanted to say that out loud while we're on YouTube. Oh, you know we are I mean? not. We are not planning a rebellion. No, no. We're not trying to overthrow the government. No, no, not yet. No. Not yet. No, we're not. Um, I'll tell you why I don't live off the ground and grow everything myself. Because number one, I don't have the resources to do that. But I'm too busy going out working to provide a living. Yeah. doesn't look like you do much of that, buddy boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And whatever it is that you're eating, just ease back on a few of them. Calorie deficit is something I would recommend to you, sausage. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> also, also, for anybody who would even think about living off the land, you need the land. And yes. not everybody has a whole bunch of land. Now, not everyone lives in Nebraska where you can just go off and you can do the farm and I got the cows and all the other shit, but I don't have the time to raise like vegetables and fruits and all the other things. It's yeah, I got the cows, but those things kind of feed themselves for the most part. But you need That's more what than I'm meat. Doing when you, I'm need, older. you need more than meat. You gotta be able to farm and do and do the actual crops and the like it, it's not as easy as it sounds. It, and, and it takes a whole lot more time. You can't be successful older. in life and farm on the side. You gotta do one Correct. or the other. Get to one or the other. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. As I say, when I'm older, I want to do that. But it does bring up a good point because the majority of foods that we eat is yeah. just it's awful. Trash. It's yeah. awful. I mean, if you look at the ingredients at the back, most of the, the words, you can't even pronounce them. Chemicals in everything, even the stuff that claims to be good for you, a lot of the time it's full of utter bullshit. So that's a big thing that we're doing in our house right now. You can do better. Listen, mm -hmm. now and again, you want to treat yourself, you know, but generally we're trying, we don't eat processed, we don't eat processed food very often maybe now you know like we might order some fried chicken or whatever and i'm sure that's right. bullshit you know what i'm saying but generally nine times out of ten we're eating clean right well and you know anytime i travel to like other countries where there's not a whole lot of processed food if i'm there for any amount of time i lose serious weight and it's fast it's crazy how just taking out like the shit that we put in our food here changes all of it's crazy crazy it, yeah it's, i mean i've said it many times that the, the food so the ingredients that the fda allow here but the majority of them aren't legal in europe mm -hmm. and that That's is it oh we're better than you it's 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 an observation which is actually correct right. it's insane it's insane and the theory is of course is that they want people to get sick because then the medis the medical industry makes even more money so it's a self-perpetuating cycle because mm -hmm. something like that is is uh the the largest advertisers in America are is the medical industry. Is uh, yeah. are these pharmaceutical companies? So it's like if they're paying for everything, the agenda is gonna kind of skew towards their way, right? It's all a load of shit. It is. You gotta eat fresh. No, you do. You do. I and mean, we're 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 done. I think. Are we? I don't know. All right. I, we'll, I think we're we'll, done. We'll buy a flight to Miami, and I'll see you on Friday. Well, watch this is the watch thing. out for the mall, the mall aliens. Dude, I'm saying I forgot about the mall oh, aliens. Oh, God. What yeah. are we talking about, Brian? <laughs> now we're waffling on. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so. Thursday's episode, I will be joined by, actually, two guests. Dean Thomas and Ooh. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Okay, so you don't want to miss that one. Anthony, safe flight. Enjoy Miami. Two nine nine, Vice City. Here we go again.